My name is PJ. I'm with the Office of Student Assistance and Relief with the State of California, and I'm here with my colleague, Navdeep. Uh, he'll be chilling in the corner. Um, so we're going to be talking about types of California colleges. But before I get into that, let me just talk a little bit about what we do at the office. We are a government state agency with the state of California, and our primary objective is to help students make informed decisions before applying to colleges. Okay, So we want to make sure the students are equipped with all the knowledge and skills that they um, can get before they make a decision that will set the tone for the rest of their life. Okay, So for, this is one part of a three-part series on researching colleges. Um, I'm sorry, types of California colleges. In this presentation, we're going to talk about three things. Number one, defining your why. So why should I go to college? Types of colleges in California. So I'll um, list out all the different types of colleges, institutions, and programs offered in the state of California. And I'll leave you with some of the resources. So you guys do have the pamphlets in your folders. So please keep in mind, uh, you, that's something you can take, um, take home with you. And if you guys have any questions, my contact information is listed in the back. So feel free to email me. All of our services are free of charge. All righty, so why should I go to college? So we put this graph here on this slide just to illustrate and portray that the higher the degree that you have in your education level, um, the less likely you're going to be unemployed. That doesn't mean you all have to be doctors. You don't have to get a master's degree. But you can clearly see your employability does go up the higher the degree you have. So versus someone who has a high school diploma, um, someone with a bachelor's degree is more likely to be employed and keep their employment. On the flip side, you also make more the more you, um, the higher you go up in the education chain. So doctoral degrees, it kind of tapers off because um, you, know, you have to consider how many you know, student loans you have to take out. But that's more for the paying for college section. But you can clearly see there's a trend. The, the higher the level of education you have, is the more likely you're going to be making more in the, in the future. So it's going to, just having this idea and knowledge in mind will help you build a great foundation for the rest of your life and to help you uh, set the tone for the rest of your future and your career op uh, opportunities and options. The power of education. I put this quote here uh, by Nelson Mandela. It says, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. This is actually one of my favorite quotes that I discovered in college. Uh, I put this here because I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I remember how to balance redox reactions or all gra like grammatical rules and you know doing long division in my head. I don't remember a lot of that stuff. What I do remember from my education is that um, I learned how to overcome some of the challenges. Okay, it's a lot of challenges that schools have, school has provided me, whether it's academically, socially, or financially. I learned how to overcome those, right? I struggled with anxiety when I was going to college. I learned how to overcome that. So those lessons that I learned from that aspect of education is what I took out of my days from college, what I took from my education, how to overcome um, you know, challenges, obstacles that are, you know, are imposed upon my life today. I use those lessons that I learned back then, even today in my, in my current job. So I challenge you guys to kind of rethink the way you think about education. I'm not saying you should get bad grades. I still want you guys to do really well in school. Do the best that you can, but kind of have a different perspective. Maybe that will motivate you to do better in school and make sure that you stay focused and um, you know, kind of define what goals, educational goals you have for yourself and really, really crush them. OK? All right, California colleges. So there are four different types of colleges that I would like to outline in this presentation. Number one being the California community colleges. Um, how many of you guys can name one community college locally here? Yes, sir. ARC, American River College. Anyone else? OK, perfect. So these are the California community colleges. There are 115, I believe, in the state of California. Um, I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the you know, slides to come. There are also the CSU program, right? the CSU system. Um, you know, the closest one being Sac State, locally here. University of California, uh, I'm not being biased with Navdeep here or anything, but we did both go to UC Davis. I'm not, you know, vouching for them or anything, but it was a pretty good school. Um, I really enjoyed my time there. So yes, yeah, so the University of California system, this is also a public institution um, in the state of California. And also in this box, you see the Bureau for Private Posting and Education and AICCU schools. These are private colleges, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I lumped them together because they are um, both under the private, um, private school sector. OK? All right, so the difference between a public and private college is primarily the funding. Okay. 
So private colleges are typically owned by an individual, a corporation, or a limited liability partnership. So keep that in mind. The way that these institutions are differently uh, funded differently kind of determines how they're going to treat their students. Not saying private colleges treat their students poorly, but their approach may be different, right? They have they have to have students enrolled in school to, you know, because that's their bread and butter. That's how they make their money. The school doesn't operate without the students. Okay? Um, they rely heavily on tuition and private funding, and they also offer a lot of you know, programs and structures um, that are more, mostly catered for students who have other obligations. So if you're a student who has, who has children, or if you're a student working full time, they offer a lot of online programs. They kind of pioneered that. Um, for, to bring convenience to students who would like to pursue their education, but also, you know, kind of tackle other opportunity or other obligations as well. Uh, often shorter programs customized for work, customized for working adults, like I mentioned, so students with other priorities uh, is a very good option for you. On the on the flip side, public colleges are publicly funded by taxpayer money. So keep that keep in mind um, when you're talking about taxpayer money, you're thinking more of stability. You're thinking more of uh, programs and institutions that are more vetted, right? Um, they typically charge a lot lower tuition. There are various types of institutions, so the community colleges, the two-year institution programs, um, the four-year universities to you know, earn a bachelor's degree. Uh, academic programs and degrees are primarily offered at these institutions, but keep in mind it's changing with the new implementation of the, Calif uh, the career education programs offered at the community colleges. So if you want to get into welding, or if you want to get into like fashion, or any other vocational trade, public colleges are now offering these programs as well uh, that are pretty flexible. Um, I'm actually taking a class at ARC right now on the side. I'm taking a design class. And uh, it's, it's a hybrid class where I can kind of do half my work online, ha and we meet once a week. So it's very convenient for me uh, because I'm someone who works full time. Just keep in mind, public colleges are highly competitive. So a lot of times, you know, for example, programs may be impacted. Uh, a lot of students are applying for the same program to the same schools, and there are only a certain number of seats available. So keep that in mind. Uh, you may be dealing with uh, competition when you're enrolling in a public college in the state of California. And that's just to say, you know, again, like I, I'd like to really highlight that the priorities between these types of institutions may be very different because of the way they're funded. Okay, so when you're researching colleges, make sure you know how the school's funded, and it will really um, maybe save you some, you know, heartache or whatever, um, any any bad situations that may happen in the near future when you make your decision. California Community Colleges. Okay, so it's a cost-effective public two-year institution. Um, I would like to highlight for all of you that are still are in enrolled in high school, it's a very it offers a very great opportunity for you to take college courses. When I was in high school, I couldn't get into a lot of the AP programs because I wasn't very good. I wasn't a very good student. But I had the option to go to uh, American River College during high school, um, and I was able to take courses for free. So not only did that help me understand what the college environment is like, it kind of helped me you know, boost my GPA because a lot of the courses you take at a community college will be weighted in your high school GPA. So it's going to make you more competitive when you start applying to different institutions. Okay, so those, for those of you don't, that don't want to do the AP courses, community college courses are a very, very viable option. Uh, great for students who are, that are um, undecided on a career path. So all the students here, how many of you guys know exactly what you want to do and where you want to go? So you were just like me when I was your age. Um, so if you are undecided on a career path, again, California community colleges are a very cost-effective uh, option. So if you don't know what you want to do, go ahead and take a community college course to see if you like that subject, right? Different types of programs. Um, they have a lot, some programs are kind of more hands-on, some are more lecture-based. It depends on your style and your personality, but community colleges offer a great, great um, opportunity for you, kind of, for you to kind of explore your interests and really understand what you want to do for the rest of your life. So it's a very great option for that. Also, there are opportunities to transfer uh, to a four-year university. So if you go to a community college and you want to transfer to a, um, a CSU like Sac State or a UC like UC Davis, um, they do offer programs. So whether it's like an associate degrees for transfer program where you can get an associate's and use those credits to transfer to a, a four-year program to complete your bachelor's degree, or uh, the TAG program, the Transfer Admission Guarantee Program. I believe that's what it's called. It guarantees you admission to a UC program. I know there's one for Davis. Um, where you, for most programs, I believe you have to meet a minimum of 3.2 3 GPA, uh, yeah, 3.2 GPA, 
And so just keep that in mind. There are different opportunities to get to your end goal. You don't have to go to a four-year university right after high school. I feel, I feel like, personally, I wish I kind of went to a community college first. That way I can, I can kind of mature, kind of know what my goals are. Um, I get to explore. Um, when I went to UC Davis, I was sitting in a class full of like maybe hundreds of students, right? Whereas in a community college, you can sit in a class kind of like this, where maybe 30, anywhere from 20 to 30, 40 students, something like that. Um, it gives you an opportunity to kind of like ease your way into that transition. So it's not like a culture shock. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So career education programs, off, uh, one of the most popular you know, types of career education programs are music, fashion, and nursing. So a lot of vocational trades as well. Um, if you want to apply, if you're interested in the community college system, you can apply at cccapply.org. Oh, I'm sorry, home.cccapply.org. Okay? California State Universities, again, these are your SAC states, your San Francisco State University, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, these are your California State Universities. Um, th this is a very cost-effective option for a public four-year university. So if you're interested in, you know, developing your skills as a leader. So these schools have, were initially implemented primarily to boost the workforce, boost the labor a labor force in California to develop future leaders to help you know manage learn management skills and learn like um, how to lead teams and things like that so it's uh, primarily focused on development of skilled workforce CSU eligibility requirements may vary depending on if you transfer from a community college so again if you decide to transfer from uh, let's say an ARC to a CSU right um, they, there may be different eligibility requirements versus if you transfer from a community college to a UC Okay, so I'd highly encourage you guys to talk to your counselors. I can't speak on the exact eligibilities right now. I'm not a professional in that area, but please talk to your counselors. They'll have all the answers for you. Uh, at Sac State, business and marketing are very popular majors offered. Um, priority application filing period is for spring semester 2020 is August 1st to 2019, August 31st to August 31st. And fall semester 2020 is between October 1st, 2019 and November 30th, 2019. So please keep in mind if you guys are interested, these are very important dates for you to remember. Okay? Okay, the University of California system, public four year university, heavily, heavily geared towards student academic research. So a lot of times when I was going to UC Davis, a lot of my professors would be writing, you know, papers. You have an option to engage in research with them and kind of understand what it takes to become a researcher. Um, primarily for science and like medical students who are interested in you know going to med school or anything in the medical field, research is a big component for the application. I don't think it's required, but it, it does make you look very good and, and competitive when you start applying to med school or uh, whatever, um, like nursing school or whatever it may be. Um, it's a great option, again, for students interested in research and science. Um, your eligibility requirements may also differ, so please talk to your counselor if you decide to transfer from a community college. Please look into the TAG program, the Transfer Admission Guarantee Program. I believe that's one of the, uh, the cornerstone programs that they offer uh, for students who want to transfer. And also, animal science and biological sciences are very popular majors offered at UC Davis. So if you want to become a vet, it's a very good option to go to UC Davis. Um, Application filing period for fall quarter 2020 is between November 1st to November 30th, okay? All right, so we're gonna start diving into the private colleges realm. So private colleges in California, they offer various types of programs and institutions. Um, so this sector of the private college um, kind of world uh, are schools under the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education, otherwise known as BPPE. Um, schools under BPPE must meet the minimum operating standards in order to operate legally in the state of California. So they must be licensed, they must be approved by the Bureau in order for them to, in order for students to know that they're going to be signing up for a um, certain level of quality when, they, when it comes to their education, okay? This, uh, some examples include Universal Technical Institute, which is right across the street, um, and Paul Mitchell, right? Limitations on transferring school credits from private institutions. So if you decide to start your educational career at a private college under the Bureau for Private Posting and Education, um, I'm speaking from experience working with other students who want to transfer to like CSU or like a UC. A lot of the credits that, um, that they took at a private college were not eligible for transfer to a CSU or UC after um, a transfer evaluation. It's because BPP has their own set um, of curriculum standards 
that may not be in line or match with the UC or CSU system. So a lot of the courses you take at a private college may not convert equally, or if, if, if converted at all, um, if you transfer to a, a public institution. So keep that in mind. If you decide to go to a BPP school, you have to stay committed to it. Uh, that's, that would probably be your best option, okay? All right, private colleges under the AICCU, so the Association of Independent California Colleges and University. Same idea, but this is more for nonprofit private colleges. So I'm talking about the Stanfords, the William Jessup Universities, the UOPs, the University of Pacifics. These are all colleges under the AICCU. Um, the AICCU represents a lot of these schools for the same reason, to maintain minimum operating standards so that you know when you're going into these schools, you know what to expect. You know that you're expecting a certain level of um, um, credibility, okay? Okay, so some of the online resources, we have the OSAR website, so the website that we, um, our office has. We have some information on research in colleges and, you know, tips and tricks about how to, you know, find your career, you know, interests and explore your career paths, um, finding out what you want to do, things like that. California College Guide Initiative website, um, it's a website that is monitored by the California Community Colleges system. And um, they offer a lot of information. I, can, I think we have another slide on that. So the OSAR website, um, again, Research in Colleges, we have a separate page for that. Finding the perfect school, uh, choosing a career, how to look for the right school. These are some things that you can learn from our informational page. And also, if you're interested in attending a Bureau for Private Postsecondary Education school, there is an online portal where you can look up certain schools so based on, for example, like a program or a city. So if you're interested in like psychology, if you type in psychology, I think I have a point right here. If you type in psychology right here, um, it'll list off all the schools that you have uh, or the options that you have to apply for psych psychology programs and things like that. If you're interested in schools in LA, you just type in LA in the city box and you'll find out you know, all the schools in LA that you can consider. Okay, so the California College Guidance in Initiative website, the californiacolleges.edu, um, what's interesting about this website is that it allows you to kind of compare and contrast the different types of institutions that we talked about today, okay? So there's a college and major search tool that you can use and you can utilize to basically um, filter out, the, filter out um, so for example, if you're choosing between two schools, you can filter out certain things. So for example, like if you're interested in a two-year university or four-year, if you're uh, looking more into like vocational or technical trade schools or distance op uh, distant learning options, so online programs, you can filter a lot just to kind of narrow down your options, right? So certain program, if you're debating between two schools and um, you use these filters, you can kind of help use this to help you make a determination on what you would, um, what would fit best for you, okay? So again, California College Options, they have, they don't have much of the BPP schools, but they have a, you know, all of the community colleges, CSUs and UCs, and also the other AICCU schools as well. Okay, so uh, I just put this slide up here just to kind of depict, basically illustrate a point. If you decide to go to a California community college, it's gonna cost you 1,104 per academic year, and this is just for tuition. You're still required to pay for food, room and board, your Netflix subscription, things like that. You're still gonna be required to pay for those things. Um, CSU, Given that you're enrolled as a full-time student, you're expected to pay about $5,742 per academic year. Local university, $11,442 per academic year. And a local private college here in this area uh, costs you about $34,200 um, uh, per academic year to, to, to pursue a bachelor's degree. Okay, so this is not to sway you away from private colleges. There may be certain parts of the you know, private college system that, that may be accommodating to you. Uh, maybe, you know, they, it may fit you based on your interests and needs, okay? But this is just to highlight, this is a big component of researching colleges. You wanna know exactly what you're signing up for. A lot of students who enroll in private colleges, they don't know that they're paying this much, okay? And that, after four years, that does add up to a lot, right? Versus if you start at a community college, you paid you know, almost a grand, or I mean a little more than a grand, and you go transfer to a UC or a CSU, you'll be paying significantly less for um, what could be the same education, same, same level of education, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, just to recap, you know, we talked about the why you want to go to college, you know, the, the understanding the whys of why you want to go to college. 
uh, the different types of California colleges in the state of California and also the different resources that you all have in your pamphlet. If you have any questions, please let me know. You have my contact information in the end uh, on your pamphlets. Thank you guys all for coming.